Looking to breathe new life into your furniture? Visit Upholstery on Broadway, conveniently located at 205A Broadway in Arlington, Massachusetts. Their complete reupholstery services have got you covered. With over 40 years of experience, they take pride in attention to detail and commitment to quality. Call 978-460-5184 for a free estimate. That's 978-460-5184. Upholstery on Broadway, where craftsmanship meets creativity. Let us offer our consecration to the Lord. Lord, we offer up to you this day, and we ask that your name is glorified in all that we do. We ask that we may come to always seek to serve you, especially in light of what you did for us, which we recognize on this day. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Well, today is Friday. It's Good Friday. It's the Friday of the Easter Triduum. Uh, the Holy Trinity of Rome, rather. And so this is the uh, culmination almost. It's actually Easter is the culmination of everything, but this is, of course, the day when we recognize when Jesus was crucified on the cross. And you may find that various parishes, including our own, by the way, especially those with a, a form of Latino community, either the um, Spanish-speaking or Portuguese-speaking communities from the Americas will do an, a reenactment of the Passion of the Christ. It's very common. I remember when I was in Chelsea, and I'm assuming they're still doing that. I don't know. Uh, Chelsea and Somerville, they used to uh, walk through the streets and they would reenact the Eucharist. And one of the guys who was a Roman soldier, the nicest guy in the world, he really was. 364 days of the year, he was the nicest guy in the world. But when it was Good Friday, he played a Roman soldier, and he was always the meanest guy as a Roman soldier. And they were able to enact this so well that they have the whipping of Jesus down to a science. I'm, I'm not kidding. You have the actor, like one of the things they, they did is you have the actor playing Jesus tied to a pole, and they would uh, whip Jesus, but the way they did it, talk about having it down to a science, they would hit the pole and they would do it so well that it looked like they were hitting Jesus. They weren't touching him at all, but they would hit the pole and it would make the noise and everything else that made it sound horrible. And I oh, it used to go bananas. I'm like, oh, I'm going to get sewed <laughs> by, the, by the actor. And they were excellent because they knew how to do it and they knew how to how to use um the rope on the uh the cross when he was carrying the cross so it would hit the cross and not him but it still looked like it, it was really amazing how well they would do and i still remember i mean there was carlos the nicest guy in the world going camina camina which means walk walk yelling at at uh, jesus at the actor playing Jesus. And he was doing an excellent job uh, dressed up as the Roman soldier and, and played it very well. And I used to, like I said, I got a kick out of it. He's the nicest guy in the world. And uh, he played it extremely well. And they all did. And they did a wonderful job. And usually, and you will find that when they do reenact the passion, the, uh, the area is packed. It's absolutely packed. So we're looking at all that and we see that. So expect to see that today. And if you do have a uh, parish nearby that is reenacting the passion, definitely go see it. For some parishes, that is the gospel. For other parishes, they do it after the gospel. I mean, after the whole mass, it's done or some they do it before. But uh, if you have a chance to see it, definitely go see it. It's done uh, really wonderfully. Now, we do it here at St. Anthony, so you're welcome to check that out. It'll be at night, and it'll be part of the litur liturgy of the um, Good Friday done by the Brazilian community, and they do that again at night. And then, of course, tomorrow is the Easter Vigil. And depending on which where you do this and what parish, some each Easter Vigils are very long. They usually go for if if you do the full Easter visual, vigil, they go about two and a half to three hours. Um, if you do the shorter version, it goes about an hour and a half. And generally what is done is English-speaking communities, especially if you have um, 
various parishes. An English-speaking community will do the shorter version, and the other languages will do a longer version. So you'll, you'll see that. And I know when I was in the seminary, they used to do it, and it was always the longer version. Now, what's the difference between the shorter version and the longer version? Well, there are um, a total of seven readings, if I have this right. Um, there were a total of seven readings. So the way the readings are done, it's a reading and then a psalm, a reading and then a psalm, a reading and then a psalm, reading, psalm, reading, reading, let me think, psalm, Gloria, reading, Alleluia, gospel. Those are the readings when they're all done. Uh, for the Easter Vigil. On the shorter one, it's reading psalm, reading psalm, reading psalm, Gloria, uh, reading gospel. So it's a little shorter. And then, of course, you have the homily, and, and pretty much everything from there goes as normal unless you have baptisms and you have, or baptisms and full initiation, in which case that's usually done there. That'll happen at the cathedral, I know. So there are the things that are going on uh, for today and tomorrow. Now, like I said, today, there are no, um, there are no masses. There are just Eucharistic services. And this mass is known for, at the very beginning of the mass, the pastor, and sometimes there's a deacon, Sometimes there are several priests, they begin the Mass by processing down in silence to the altar, and then they lay prostrate uh, before the altar, which is bare, and they do that for maybe about 30 seconds to a minute, and then they stand up, and then they begin the service, and the service basically begins with the opening prayer. So that's what's going to happen today. And it's obviously the recognition of Jesus dying on the cross. And one of my favorite stories to tell on that day is the story of St. Maximus the Confessor. And, you know, I've read it. I've read it several times. I, to this day, can't find where it is now. I always thought it was in the 100 centuries on charity, and I've read the 100 centuries on charity since then, and I haven't found it, so I can't remember where it is, but I read it in the seminary. And the way it works is this. Jesus um, dies on the cross, and what St. Maximus explains is why did he have to die on the cross? You know, there is a teaching that Jesus had to die for our sins, but there is no official Catholic teaching on why he had to die on the cross three o'clock in the afternoon on what we now call Good Friday. And so what St. Maximus the Confessor taught is this is literally the last temptation of Christ. What is actually happening is, and we can see that in Mel Gibson's movie, The Passion of the Christ, is the devil is using this this uh, experience, uh, the devil is using this experience in order to get Jesus to not love for so much, and this is my word, a millisecond. You see, the way it works is Jesus' role was to live the law perfectly, and the law is simply love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, love your neighbor as yourself. So he had to live that perfectly. So if the devil could get Jesus not even to hate, just not to love, for so much as a millisecond, humanity would be lost. And that's what is so important. So what is actually happening on Good Friday is, and I remember a priest saying this a long time ago, is you're watching something demonic. And I'm saying, how is that demonic? Well, that's how. The devil is doing everything he can to make, uh, to make Jesus suffer to the point he will stop loving. That's according to St. Maximus the Confessor, who wrote in the I believe, 7th or 8th century A.D. He's a, uh, he is considered a saint, obviously. He's, a, he's very well respected in the church and in Eastern Orthodoxy. So we see all that, and that's St. Maximus the Confessor. So it's a powerful reality, what you're seeing there. And you're seeing that he did all that so that we could be saved. And so he did that, that we could encounter salvation. So it's a very powerful act, a very powerful reality we see there. I always bring up 
um, I learned this from a uh, priest when I returned to the church at St. Charles Borromeo in Point Loma, California, in that parish. But this priest used to point out that, and uh, I use it all the time, there were two people Jesus never spoke to. Who spoke to him? And that was the bad thief on the cross and Herod. And so in today's reading, you'll see both of them. Uh, he never responds to Herod, and he never responds to the bad thief on the cross. If you want to ask how Jesus dealt, what I mean, how uh, how can I just put this? The way he uh, rejected someone is by silence. That's always important. Now, you know, he talks about in the parables as uh, saying, I never knew you, but what you see is he never responds to Herod and he never responds to the bad thief on the cross. Some people will say, and I personally believe this, the bad thief on the cross is channeling the demonic because first of all, he's saying everything that was said, uh, that's being said by those around him. And he's giving the same type of temptation that the devil gives. And so he's basically I've always believed he's channeling the demonic. And this man is the ultimate in manipulation. I always, always notice that. Um, if you are the son of God, get yourself off the cross in us as well. Does this guy have any, any desire to change his ways? No, he's just going to go out and rob people again. The other one has changed, but this guy has not and never will. And if you want to see an image of someone who would be in hell, there you go. Interesting enough, the Council of Trent does not say that, though it says that Cain and Judas are in hell. And I would I would say that they should add that name too. I'm sorry, I absolutely believe that. Well, in any case, we will talk to you tomorrow, but no, we won't. We'll talk to you on Monday. We'll talk to you in Easter season. Have yourself a blessed day. I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com, and you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out Catholic TV. Dot com. Looking to breathe new life into your furniture? Visit Upholstery on Broadway, conveniently located at 205A Broadway in Arlington, Massachusetts. Their complete reupholstery services have got you covered. With over 40 years of experience, they take pride in attention to detail and commitment to quality. Call 978-460-5184 for a free estimate. That's 978-460-5184. Upholstery on Broadway, where craftsmanship meets creativity.